Hi guys, welcome to another video. Uh, today is a rainy day. I guess there's some typhoon weather coming around, but uh, we're going to talk about uh, being firm and giving a hard no and maybe becoming a little bit red-pilled while living here in the Philippines because it's kind of important to do that and I'll explain further. Stick around. All right, guys, so looks like a day at home binging movies, playing games, I don't know, whatever, but it looks like it's going to be rainy all day here. And you know what's funny is I, I run into more people. They've lived here for the longest time, and they don't have an umbrella. They don't have any rain gear for their motorbike. Uh, this is the tropics, you know, so if you do move out here, get yourself an umbrella to bring with. Uh, get yourself some rain gear because it does rain here often. I want to talk a little bit about taking a more hard stance against Filipinas here because if you aren't careful they can part with some of your hard-earned pesos quite easily here they have a way about them they're soft-spoken they're very feminine they have a way to pull at your heartstrings here and they can definitely cause you to hand over those pesos sometimes. It's happened to me multiple times before I even moved here and when I first got here. And you don't really need to spend a lot of money to impress a Filipina. You really don't. And a lot of guys come here and when they get here, they have been invisible in the West. I've done a video on this, but you know, for most guys, uh, even me, I was at, when I moved here, I was 44, 45. And at that point, to the age group of 20s and 30s, I was all but invisible. I, there's no 20s or 30s even looking at me anymore. I think I had dated, before I had left, I had dated a girl who was, I think, 39. And I thought to myself, wow, I'm doing pretty well dating a, a girl who's in her 30s. She might have been 38, 38, 39. And I think, again, I was 44, I believe. So we're not talking a big age difference, but for the most part, just being in my mid-40s, 20s and 30s, that was off the market. That was gone. You, you weren't dating girls in their 20s and 30s. You start to get into your 50s and 60s, well, it's extreme slim pickings. And so when you get over here, you're kind of overwhelmed by the beauty, the friendliness, how feminine they are, uh, soft-spoken and fun. I mean, Filipinas for me are just some of the funnest people because they know how to have a good time almost anywhere. I mean, they're constantly laughing. And uh, I mean, I can take Maya to a funeral and she will find something amusing, right? <laughs> it's just, they are very happy-go-lucky people. You have to learn to be a little bit hard. You gotta be, you gotta learn how to give a firm no or bad things can happen in relationships and everything here. Uh, before we go any further, guys, if you wanna get a free PDF, you can either print it off or download it. You can head over to my website, geointhephilippines.com scroll a little ways down the page click on the uh, free prep list for moving out to the philippines this will also help you even if you're taking a long trip to the philippines and uh, it's i think it's about four or five pages it's loaded with information it's free uh, head over there check it out print it or download it and uh, use that as kind of a guide of maybe some things that you should get done or have done before you move out here Back to the video. So when I first got out here, I was a bit soft in some aspects. You know, I, I it was hard for me to say no. I mean, they really pulled at my, my heartstrings. You know, we would go out to dinner and I just, you know, she would say, and, uh, can I bring my friend? I was like, sure, you know, or, or, or I would even volunteer. And I'd say, yeah, you can, bring your, uh, you can bring your brother and sister or whatever. And I was just, constantly it's, it's almost like I felt bad you know like about how they lived 
um, how they didn't have a lot of things. And all of a sudden I got to this place and my monies go so much further. And I told myself, well, you know, enjoy life and um, help them along. I, you, you feel bad. I, you know, I remember my last girlfriend when I first met her, she was living in this boarding house that was just horrible conditions in, in my eyes. For her, it just seemed like normal. And uh, it was all about, let me rescue her from this boarding house. I mean, I was willing to put her up into a, a better place and pay for it. And, and, and you just can't go around doing all of that until you really get into a serious, serious relationship. Because at every turn here, you're going to meet somebody that you feel sorry for. You wish you could help out. And uh, you just can't, you can't rescue every single girl here. It's, it's just impossible. And it does feel good to do that, you know, for, for some of us. Some of us uh, just aren't that type of a person, but for me, it, it was a good feeling. But you do have to be a little bit red-pilled, in my opinion here. You have to be firm on a lot of things. You learn, need to learn to say no. You know, you can't give in to them and just give them whatever they want. And I've seen more Filipinas become just spoiled just as bad as any Western girl. Uh, I'm not going to give out names or anybody, but I know a guy who got married. The age difference was quite significant, um, in my opinion. Uh, we're talking to the point where it's grandfather and granddaughter age difference. So he's well into his 60s, 67. I think she's like 22. Uh, she was just poverty stricken. I mean, she was living in just a, a squatter village, really, when he met her with her family. And uh, this guy ended up marrying her, took her life, you know, all the way from down here, all the way up to here into high quality living to pretty much she doesn't even have to do, he doesn't even let her do housework at home. They hired somebody to take care of the house. And for me, that's like a big mistake. I mean, that's just overboard. You know, at least she can, you know, you're going to bring her from here all the way up to here. She can at least wash some dishes. And uh, he told me one day, he goes, anything that uh, I wouldn't do, I don't want her doing. And so because he wouldn't clean a toilet or wash any dishes, he doesn't think that she should have to do that either. He, he turned her into like a pretty, probably a pretty sweet girl. And into a very kind of she's kind of stuck up and entitled it, you do see that sometimes you'll see some filipinas who were just very sweet girls and they were down here you know in in the poverty line they were you know low on the totem pole and all of a sudden their life has been brought up to here and they can become really spoiled and usually it's the guy's fault I mean, vacations buy whatever they want uh Every time they're at the mall, is there anything you want? You want to go in the clothing store and buy something? You know, and before she met you, she was going to these used uh, clothing stores like Ukai Ukai and buying used clothes for 20 pesos for a shirt. And now all of a sudden you're taking her to the Gap and uh, you've hired a housekeeper for her. And uh, so these guys, they really can end up uh, just spoiling the girl and kind of ruining her. You know, you get a sweet province girl who is cooking and helping clean. Now, I'm not saying make a slave out of your girlfriend or wife. That's not what I'm saying. You know, if it's a huge house or something, certainly get her some help. Uh, if you guys have kids together and you need somebody to help with the kids, then help. Get some help. Uh, you know, help your wife uh you know, take the trash out and do things like that. But don't get to the point where she's just, all of a sudden she is like a queen and she doesn't have to lift a finger to do anything. And again, uh, other Filipinas will tell you this, that some girls, once they get a foreigner boyfriend and after a while they can become pretty spoiled and they start to think that they are so much better than other Filipinas. And uh, it's, it's a fact, I'm telling you. I've met plenty of Filipinas that, with their boyfriend, and I'm thinking to myself, God, she's like a spoiled child. I'd met a couple, and 
we were out at dinner and she like ordered like this expensive dinner and appetizer and salad and even a dessert and barely ate anything. I'm thinking to myself, I'd be a bit annoyed, you know? You know, I, I still have that uh, in my head that if you order something, you need to finish it before you go order something else. You don't order dessert if you got half of your dinner still left. That's just my opinion. That's how I was raised. So again, you need to take that red pill. Uh, you don't have to be as hardcore as you were in the West because these aren't Western women. And uh, it, don't overspoil. You're just going to ruin a good a good girl here, and uh, they're going to become entitled. So, I again, I, I've seen so many that uh, guys have just turned them into spoiled brats, self entitled, and uh, it's a shame because for the for the most part, now this is not all this is not all the cases. For the most part, most of these Filipinas still remain very sweet and very nice, but I do think it has a lot to do with the guy. If you go overboard and spoiling and showering with gifts and everything, you're, you're ruining these girls. And uh, you're gonna ruin your own relationship. So, food for thought, it's a rainy day. I'm gonna be stuck at home probably all day, so I thought I would uh, put out this video about this. Thank you guys for watching, appreciate it. See you guys next time, bye.